Hello, everybody. Welcome to day two of BOF Voices at the Soho Farmhouse in the frosty English countryside. Today's theme was live your best life. And it was a string of lessons in how to be much, much better than I am. But I thought we'd look at a, a little uh, collection of clips from the day, which will give you a flavor of all the different voices who contributed to a very uplifting day. Good morning and welcome to the future. Something is going to happen. Are we all ready to accelerate? Is this a break from the past? Because I figure if you're going to change the system, you should probably just build a new one. Conformity is the enemy of progress mm -hmm. and creativity and business. You will have a backlash. Like, are we going to get anywhere without, you know, stirring some shit up? No. We're fighting for freedom here. Yeah. We're not fighting to decorate another cage. We're going to transition. <laughs> Let's all take a deep breath. <sighs> Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Does anyone think that they know someone who might have experienced poor mental health during the pandemic? Maybe it's someone at home. We spend so much of our time striving for this elusive thing called happiness, when really, the opposite of sadness to me is not happiness. It's peace. We're just creating art that people feel like they can live their lives in and be authentic with who they are. Um, and I just think it's just a 360 scope at which we all get to live our kind of authentic, fabulous lives, whether you're John Smith or you're me or you're you. We all feel represented and we all feel beautiful. So from Harris Reed on screen to Harris Reed in front of me in a chair, Harris Reed is one of my guests tonight, Mohsen Zaidi, who just uh, came off stage gave the closing address of, um, of this year's Voices. Welcome to you both. Thank you. So much to talk about in our very, very short space of time. Now, <laughs> neither of you has been to Voices before, so no. really curious to know what you thought of the day, uh, what surprised you about the day, and what you will take away. Mohsen. Well, as you say, there's so much. I, I, I think one of the things that really struck me was how much of a sense of community there was. It was almost like we'd all come together from these different paths to put into this pot of learning that we could all then drink from. And I feel so invigorated by all the different talks. So actually I was saying to Harris before we came on that actually the discussion between Harris and the lock was one of my favorites because it challenged the way I thought about clothes. And I thought to myself, I would wear a kilt, but I wouldn't wear a skirt. And what's going on there? Because, as they said, it's just a piece of cloth. The exact same thing. And so there were so many examples of my thinking being challenged. Um, there was Sinead Burke, who I just thought was incredible. And she was talking about um, the representation of disabled people in um, fashion, but also in other walks of life. So she, she was telling this story about going into a disabled bathroom and how actually they're hideous. And they don't function properly, not for every sort of disability. And that's because they're designed for, not with disabled people. And that, that, that tiny little phrase, for, not with, it applies to so much of the world, right? We are told something, we, things are given to us, things are done for us, not with us, particularly when you're minorities. And so that was a really powerful takeaway for me. Mawson, that would be Harris. I'm going to talk to you in a minute, in a second. <laughs> that would be a very good moment to actually play a clip of Sinead talking yeah. about that very thing. Disability is not a dirty word. And my apology is not something you can avoid with flexibility. Welcome. We are so used to thinking of disability as something that makes us less, that we avoid it and have come up with synonyms, special needs, differently abled, handicapped, superheroes. Disability is wonderful. It is the only identity group that we will all be part of at one stage in our lives because I hope we all have the privilege of getting older. But don't avoid it because when you avoid the word, you avoid the community. Say the word disabled. It's great. Thank you, Sinead. Harris, <laughs> your conversation with Alok was spicy. Uh, <laughs> and, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, we've spoken before, so I know, I know really how you think about things. 
did a lock provoke you in any way, make you see things differently? Because a lock is so eloquent and so completely measured in the way he meets out his opinions that he's very, very persuasive. A lock, it was, I mean, like you said, they speak so eloquently and I was even nervous before I went up on stage because I felt very, you know, I didn't, I went to university, but for fashion design, not for, you know, in literature writing, I'm deeply dyslexic, dyspraxic. And I was really nervous to speak because what I love about Instagram and everything is that it's very conversational and easy, but going up in front of a board of, you know, CEOs, CFOs, all these amazing people, I was really nervous. So the conversation, I think I got a bit even more fiery and a bit more kind of dramatic in the way of passion because a lot could, could speak so eloquently and identify so many of the things that I fight for on a regular basis and stand with and again, um, not against, but I feel like it made me extra, probably spicy and flary because I, it made me feel like I needed to be the, you know, the yin and the yang. Um, you got your information from them and then from me, you know, hopefully a lot of passion, hand waving and a lot of like, come on, let's get out there and make a difference. <laughs> no, but they really nail things very epigrammatically. So I think it would be really nice to look at a little clip of your conversation with a lot. What are some of the awkward and uncomfortable things we're seeing with people trying to embrace, quote unquote, gender fluidity? I think it, for me, a lot of it revolves around pride, at least in my interpret, like, in my opinion, because it's like, I think any queer person knows when quite pride comes around and if you have any following, you, your inbox just gets full of companies I won't name. And it's that quick thing of like, wear this rainbow t-shirt, come to this fabulous Always. dinner. At it's this like, point, I say rainbow's homophobic uh, I honestly think rainbows yeah. are a bit homophobic because really? it's also, I look at the person and it's from like an email from someone named like John Smith. Right. Wear this rainbow, I'm like, John Smith, what do you know about me and my history and who I am? Absolutely. That's a takeaway from the day. Rainbows are homophobic. Rainbows are homophobic. That was homophobic. a very good one. <laughs> Maybe only in June. <laughs> For a couple of days. For a couple of days. Thank you a lot. <laughs> now, what surprised you about today? That, what, did you, what did you see that you didn't expect to see at something like a gathering like this? I think for me, I came into it again, first voices. I was quite nervous. I think this for me felt like I was in the space of, again, CEOs, very established people. And I was a bit nervous that I wasn't even going to fully be able to even comprehend a lot of the discussions or even fully be able to understand, like, the metasphere, like the metaspace, the, the fact, like, it's like <laughs> all this. Yeah, the metaverse, thank you. Um, and I think for me, what I really loved is, you know, it, from like Sinead to everyone, just them breaking down to these pillars or these points or these graphs, or these charts. Actually, the steps are so simple if we all jump on on the bandwagon and actually go and actually implement them. So for me, it was actually quite surprising that, you know, whether it was, you know, mental health and the well-being in the workplace or whether it was Sinead and talking about just um, people who are disabled and that, came, like, it was, I just saw that there was actually such, there's so many kind of easy steps we can all take. It's just most people I think are too nervous or too scared or too ashamed to bring up these topics or talk about these things. So I found it actually quite accessible and it actually made me feel quite excited instead of like me being a bit kind of nervous and... <laughs> nervous? I was nervous. Harris Reed I nervous? I know, I know, I'm not usually <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Cannot believe that. You know what, what, what strikes me? There's been so much talk about the metaverse, kind of mm. word of the gathering, word of the, the of vo BOF Voices 2021. And I'm a multiverse man myself, mm. okay. so I'm going to take a while to get used to the metaverse. But I come away from that today with a sense of humanity, mm. the human, I mean, one of the things I loved was, was Richard Christensen talking about his garden. Now, Absolutely. How did, how did you feel about that? It was almost like you were walking through the garden with him, you know, not just visually, but in terms of the way he described his childhood coming from a farm and then leaving that world behind because he thought, I don't want to be a farmer. And then he works in the fashion world. But then, he, but now he's straight, I mean, he's, he's thriving as a farmer, as a, as a modern day farmer. And like one of the things that I remember that really stayed with me was he said that, um, that he was using this mainstream soap and all the water from his house goes to his garden, but the soap was making the rose petals his turn roses brown. Went brown. And he yeah. said to himself, if I wouldn't use this soap for my roses, why am I using it for myself? And so he started making his own. And I just thought, wow, like it's such a tiny detail but it can have a profound impact on his future because now he makes soap amongst other things and helps other people avoid damaging their hands. Uh, you know, I think his, his talk was in a way the most profound lesson in community that we got because you saw how he's expanded his ethos mm. to help people all over his area in California. And everything that everybody is making 
during the pandemic, everybody coming together to recreate themselves in adversity in a way, so beautiful. But this notion of transformation was huge, I thought. And that was, that was to me, one of the themes of the day. Harris, what do you have to say about that in the notion of transformation in your own life and your own work? Oh, I mean, it's all, I think for me, especially after listening to people speak today, you know, the idea of transformation is for me, it's about being able to transport yourself and what you look like and how you identify and how you kind of portray yourself in this kind of new scope in this new world. And how, again, for me, through it's a fashion lens. So it's, you know, what you choose to put on your body, the way that you choose to do your hair, your makeup, the way that you go to speak, the way that you show yourself on social media. I think for me, it's a much more playful space of this thing of, you know, we're all pulling from different communities, from different people, um, and kind of growing as a collective, I guess. Um, and it's, I think it's for something that's a bit, ex I think it's exciting. I was looking at it as being a bit scary, but I think it's it can be both. <laughs> it can be both. It's, I think sometimes it's good when you're scared of something because it makes it, you know, once you finally figure out what it is that you were looking for, the transformation you were kind of hoping to transform into, it's a lot more rewarding. Aren't you amazed that the Future Laboratory, the, the guys who started the day talking about their ideal vision of, of this utopian mm -hmm. future, uh, we have quite a lot of things standing between us and that utopia, number one being the political systems mm -hmm. that a number of countries live underneath. Um, I very much doubt that Jacob Rees-Mogg is a harbinger of the future. <laughs> but uh, they mentioned 50 genders in, yeah. in their talk, that the future is... You and Locke were talking about ungendered fashion, mm. non-gendered fashion. With 50 genders, it's impossible for it. It would be literally impossible for anything to mm. be um, gendered. And then also they talk about the world wild web, mm -hmm. which is another thing I love. Um, what do you see in that for, for us? The, do, you, do you see these visions as pipe dreams or do you see obviously there's a, a sense from the day that we want to be providing practical mm. information yeah. in a way practical inspiration uh, how do you how do you relate to their fantastic vision of business districts being torn down and I know. you think there's <laughs> kind of eden <laughs> do you know that the pace of their talk was almost the same as the pace of their message right because what they were saying was we've gone from this slow evolution in history of things happening quite slowly. You know, Industrial Revolution was in the early 1900s and now we're kind of got these skyscrapers. And they, I think the talk was called the age of acceleration. And so they were, they, I mean, they were so knowledgeable and they were just bombarding so much at, at us in a way that was incredible. Let's see the bombardment. We have a clip. So welcome to the transformative 20s. <laughs> Those of you that think that the uh, coronavirus pandemic is hopefully just the only shock that we're going to experience over the next 10 years, I'm afraid are sadly either very delusional or completely misinformed. What we all have to get used to is an acceleration of disruption on a global scale that polaxes our societies, our businesses, our way of doing things on a scale that we've never really known before. The notion or the time for progressive evolutionary change is behind us. We have reached the point where it is about radical resets, over which sometimes we have absolutely no control. Radical reset yeah. that we have no control over, to me, equals revolution, and I'm so partial to revolution. <laughs> but you know what? We had the wonderful Jay Shetty, um, who had us choose words, a word that defined our worst day and a word that defined one of our best experiences mm. in a very, put us into a very meditative state. We have a quote from him here. Now, how many of you have ever Googled yourselves? Be honest. If you're laughing, you definitely have Googled yourself. So just, just raise your hands. Uh, how many of you regret Googling yourself? Thank you for being honest. How many of you have never Googled yourself and would never even dream of it? Hands up high. And how many of you don't put up your hands no matter what I say? Because <laughs> there's a whole, a whole group of you here. So which, whichever one you are, what I find fascinating about Google is that it shows us mass thinking. Right? It shows us mass thinking. And so when you go on, and I recommend you all do this afterwards, not, not during the session, please, uh, to just go into Google and type in, I hate. Just I hate. This is what the first three responses are. 
The first is my life. I hate my life. The second is my job. I hate my job. And the third one is my husband. I hate my husband. <laughs> That's, Imran, you're going to have to invite me for a whole other presentation for that one. because We're not going to get to that one today. That is Jay Shetty in a bit more of stand-up comedian mode. I, I'm, I was thinking about him when he put us into this mm. meditative state. Yeah. We came up with these two words. Words. Today, there were so many wonderful words. I mean, like I said, I take away rainbows are homophobic. <laughs> What do you take? What what did you take? Is there a phrase that that rings <sighs> out from the day for you, either of you? Words wordsmith. I mean. Yeah, I, mean. I know. Um, well, I suppose the the when Jay was talking, the thing that really struck me was when he asked us to think about one word that we associated with the worst day of our lives. The word that came to my mind was courage because I was thinking about having to come out to my parents. And I just thought, wow, I never, unless Jay had, had made us close our eyes and said, right, I want you to think about this thing, and now I want you to give it a word, I never would have thought about putting the worst day of my life together with the word courage. So, I, and I think that was the theme of the day, is we were constantly being confronted with new ways of thinking. Harris, any word? You didn't see that actual bit. So. I didn't see that actual bit, but I was just trying to think because there was so much. I was crying, like between yours and being <laughs> Sinead, I was crying like the whole time. And I think the thing that actually I was t saying to you earlier that really stuck with me is when you were saying that ultimately I'm always thinking about, oh, I want to be happy, I want to be happy, I want to be happy. But when you said, I want to be at peace, mm. that really stuck with me because that rang true to so much of me feeling like I'm kind of always protesting and standing for something. And I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm fighting for us all to be happy. And, this, and then we're like, at peace, I'm like, that is such a beautiful way to kind of round off the whole feeling of what I want everyone to experience, whether it's through clothing, living, identity, sexuality. Um, and so that really stuck with me. But I kind of go silent for the first time in my life because there's so many people yeah, that through so, so many different things that I'm like, oh, it's this, it's being this inclusivity. It's, it's looking at like, just, I'm like, especially after Sinead thing, I mm. literally have been writing down notes the whole time of how I want to implement and change. And like, it's- Yeah. V Vanessa, Vanessa Kingori, she uh, spoke about always being on the outside and actually being totally comfortable with that and owning it. And that really struck me as well, because clearly it's worked. But you, you said there is beauty in the broken. Absolutely. Which, which, which you know, when Vanessa's talking about being on the outside, mm -hmm. things that people might think of as negatives in their lives mm -hmm. can be repurposed, mm -hmm. and they can actually become strengths yes. instead of weaknesses. I mean, we actually, we, actually, <laughs> we actually are at the very end of the second one of the two uh, roundups we did of voices. We really need more days mm, of absolutely. voices, I think, so we can do more of these things. But I would love to close with something that I think everybody who saw it will take away as a very, very happy memory. Um, Wayne McGregor choreographed a ballet for us last night. He is an incredible choreographer. I watch what he does with the human body, and he, it really is a, an object lesson in possibility. I will never be able to dance like that, but in my head I can dream. Voices, <laughs> 2021, we can dream. He said uh, words, more fabulous words, misbehave more beautifully, more often. So on that note, I thank both of you for thank coming you. to thank talk you. to me. And let's look at Wayne as a, as a goodbye to BOF Voices 2021. Goodbye.
Thank you.